everybody. My name is Heather and I'm here with Ryan Drake, our ecological horticulturist. And we're here for another Plant Fact Friday to talk about an important spring tradition process. Can you tell us more about what we're doing today? It's certainly both of those things. So <laughs> we're, um, we do our cutback of the garden in spring rather than fall. So we've been in the past week and a half, we've been doing our spring cutback. Um, so it's our annual tradition. Um, right around mid-March is, is when we start to do this. Um, so we leave everything up during the winter, both for winter interest of the garden as, as the plants and the snow and everything, all of those good winter endeavors. Um, but it also provides a lot of great habitat and food for wildlife, which is something we're really trying to support here in the middle of um, an urban environment even. Um, so we've got a lot of wildlife from birds to bees and minks and mammals in between. So, awesome. um, yeah, so now is the time that we make some decisions on, on how and when we cut back. Um, so we can walk through some of that today if you're willing to yes, go in the me. rain a little bit. Show me what we do. <laughs> so I'll give you some tools. Okay. So we've got what our are shears. The tools? Um, our shears are great for a lot of our grasses. Okay. So right behind me, we've got little blue stem. Um, so we'll be shearing all of that away. Um, we've got our garden clippers and maybe a larger pair for some larger um, stems and woody material. Um, and then uh, we get buckets and everything. And um, it, it just depends on what the space is um, and how we cut back. Gotcha. So what's the area that we're going to be cutting back right now? So first we'll go into our Rutledge conifer garden. Gotcha. Um, so this is an area that is designed as a gravel garden. So the point of the gravel is actually a weed suppressant and to keep things hot and dry. But to keep weeds out of it, we have to keep organic matter out of it. So it'll be opposite in the garden we go to next, um, oh. the savanna, where we want to get all of the organic matter and the plant debris out of this garden. Um, so that the gravel can function to the best of its ability. Makes sense. Yeah. All right, let's go on a walk. All right. I do want to show you guys some of the ways that I'm making decisions about what I saw last year. So being observational in the garden throughout the season helps us so much in the way that we can make informed and educated decisions about what's going on in our garden. Last year, um, I cut these back. This is Ipomopsis rubra or standing cypress. Um, so really beautiful red blooms in the summertime, very yeah. popular with hummingbirds. Um, but it's also a great stem nesting plant for stem nesting bees. So oh, 30 so bees that actually nest inside of the stem. Yes, so right inside. So um, actually 30% of native bees are stem nesting bees. So we're, we're doing a lot to support those in a manual way. Mm -hmm. um, so in the wild, those bees would be finding um, plants that are either broken or burnt and, and burrowing straight into the middle of that stem mm -hmm. um, that would be broken. I just manually did this last year. Um, as this bloom was spent, I cut that midsummer um, and they burrowed right in. Wow. Um, so they actually raised a brood in that stem and now um, other bees are hibernating, basically. Well, it's what they call diapause, uh -huh. so they um, are in this extended state of, state of development. Um, so they're still in the stem right now. So oh, they are? Yeah, so <laughs> we don't want to just throw that away or compost it. Um, so, but again, I need to get rid of all of this plant matter in this style of garden. So what I can do instead is make those informed decisions and look for holes like that that will inform me that I've got a stem nester in this plant. Um, so I can cut that right down to the base uh -huh. and then I can put it off into the hillside out of the way um, and then let those bees come out of diapause later on in the season. That is so cool. That takes such a level of observation and <laughs> ecological knowledge, but I'm so glad that you're here to advocate for the bees. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's a great... Um, Plant, they really like those really pithy stems. So anything like Vernonia or Joe pie weed or mm -hmm. um, cut plants, things like that. Um, it, it is, it is just practice. Um, practice makes perfect, right? It's, it's all about observation and, and kind of 
really getting to know your spaces and your gardens and what's happening. Yeah. We already kind of went over some of our grasses. So this is what it looks like when we cut the grasses away and we take out all of that debris. So we're just cutting right above the crown. Um, so then those will sprout up again um, and we'll see that come back. Gotcha. So this is kind of what the space will look like once we do a little bit more of that spring cut back. Should we go over to the savanna and see what's different over there? Yeah, yeah, awesome. absolutely. Let's go. Oh, wow, it looks totally different. <laughs> it does. It's always um, very refreshing. <laughs> Gives it kind of a, a clean slate to it almost. Wow. Um, so, I mean, you can tell right from the start, this has been cut back and this is still yet to be done. So there's the before, the before and the after. Um, so first of all, what do you use to do this? Because this is not done by hand, correct? No. So okay. this space is, would just be too large to do by hand. Um, I think home gardeners who maybe have smaller gardens would be able to do that by hand with the shears in your hand and, and other tools that you might have in your shed. Mm -hmm. um, certainly uh, approachable to do by hand as well, but because we have such big spaces, and I also do this in the parking lot, um, that's over an acre to, to cover. So, so we use a, a special bush cutter mower, so it's even more powerful than your regular lawn mower. A uh, regular lawn mower wouldn't be able to handle some of this plant material. <laughs> so it is, it is a special, um, special equipment that we use. And it, I see it kind of creates the layer of dead plant material, kind of like mulch. Mm -hmm. Is that something that you can create at home as well if you don't have the mower? Or is that something that the mower does for us that is kind of unique? Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, if, even if you're shearing at home, mm -hmm. uh, you can cut things up a little bit more into chunks and, and use that as mulch. Um, so we leave all of that plant debris. Um, it, it provides nutrients back into the soil. It, it mulches the area and suppresses weeds. And it also is really valuable for wildlife, right? So birds will come and pick up the grass and make bird nests, and so will the mm -hmm. rodents, um, which in turn, um, bumblebees will use rodent nests as their new colonies. Um, so it's all this cycle that's, all that's happening yeah. within the garden itself. So if there's, say, another stem nesting bee out here in the savanna, and we, we mow through his home, is it okay to leave him out on the ground in the form of mulch? Or is that something that you would have to remove? So that's something I, I just kind of be observational and I take a look. So before I go and mow over everything, I, I am aware of what, um, where they might be nesting. So um, a good example of this is um, right underneath, and this is what I do oftentimes, is, is leaf stems up even through the season, the green mm -hmm. season. So um, we might be leaving them 12 inches, 24 inches off the ground. Um, and what I often do is, is I hide those within woody stuff. So this will actually leaf out and cover those stems. Um, so you don't see that as a visual impact, um, but still provides habitat through that coming season. Uh, and we've actually got a few, few nesting aggregates that, that come back again and again um, each year within those woody materials. So I tend to make some of those decisions both design-wise and ecologically um, via hiding them in woody materials <laughs> or, or just um, doing it in different ways like that. But you I certainly could cut it back, um, set it off to the side and allow them to come out of diapause. I love it. It's sneaky ecology. <laughs> <laughs> in a sense, yes. Well, thank you, Ryan, for showing us around some of the areas that you manage and for walking <laughs> us through this really important uh, and really interesting process. And we hope that some of you guys are doing some spring cleanup at home uh, and you can take some notes. So thank you, Ryan. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for having me.